Once a symbol of Hollywood's golden era, Liza Minnelli's mansion now stands as a haunting relic of fame and fortune gone awry. How did this opulent estate, once alive with A-list parties and extravagant celebrations, fall into disrepair? Liza Minnelli's ascent to stardom. She was born on March 12, 1946, in Hollywood, California. Daughter of legendary actress Judy Garland and director Vincente Minnelli, she was destined for the spotlight. Liza's career began early. At the age of three, she appeared in the final scene of the musical In the Good Old Summertime, 1949, alongside her mother. Her first major role came in 1963, when she starred in an off-Broadway revival of Best Foot Forward. This performance earned her the Theatre World Award. At 19, she became the youngest person to win a Tony Award for her role in Flora the Red Menace, 1965. This was just the beginning. Liza's rise to fame was marked by several significant milestones. In 1969, she starred in The Sterile Cuckoo, earning her first Academy Award nomination. But it was her role in Cabaret, 1972, that catapulted her to superstardom. Directed by Bob Fosse, the film was a huge success. Her portrayal of Sally Bowles won her an Academy Award for Best Actress, a Golden Globe, and a BAFTA Award. Her success in Cabaret solidified her place in Hollywood. The film received eight Oscars, including Best Director for Fosse and Best Cinematography for Jeffrey Unsworth. Liza's performance, characterized by her powerful voice and expressive eyes, became iconic. Following Cabaret, she continued to shine on both stage and screen. In 1977, she starred in Martin Scorsese's musical drama New York, New York, alongside Robert De Niro. Though the film didn't achieve commercial success, it gave birth to one of her most famous songs, theme from New York, New York. Throughout the 1970s, her presence was ubiquitous. She made numerous television appearances, including her own Emmy-winning special, Liza with a Z, 1972, directed by Bob Fosse. This special showcased her exceptional talent and versatility, blending music, dance, and comedy. By the late 1970s, Liza Minnelli was not just a star, she was a cultural icon. Her unique style, characterized by short jet black hair and dramatic makeup, was instantly recognizable. She became a muse for fashion designers, including Halston, with whom she shared a close friendship. The peak of fame. In the 1970s, Liza Minnelli's career reached its zenith. With her role in Cabaret making her a household name, she quickly became one of Hollywood's most sought-after talents. During this period, her personal life was also in the spotlight. Her marriage to Jack Haley Jr. in 1974 brought her into the public eye in new ways. Haley, the son of the actor who played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, seemed a fitting partner for Hollywood royalty. Their relationship, while high profile, ultimately ended in divorce in 1979. Despite this, they remained friends, showing the resilience of her character. Throughout the 1970s, her influence extended beyond the screen and stage. She became a fashion icon, often seen in the latest designs by Halston, a close friend and one of the era's most influential designers. Her style, characterized by her distinctive short hair, bold makeup, and glamorous outfits, set trends and inspired countless fans. Her performances were not limited to film and television. She continued to light up the stage with electrifying performances. One notable show was her return to Broadway in The Act, 1977, a musical created specifically for her. The show ran for 233 performances and earned her a second Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical. As the 1980s approached, Liza Minnelli was at the pinnacle of her career. She had achieved immense success, becoming an icon in music, film, and theater, a home full of splendor and elegance. In the midst of her career highs, Liza Minnelli made a significant purchase that symbolized her success, a luxurious mansion in Beverly Hills. This opulent estate, bought in the early 1970s, became her sanctuary and a reflection of her larger-than-life persona. The mansion, located on North Roxbury Drive, was a sprawling property that exuded elegance and sophistication. It boasted classic Hollywood architecture with grand columns, expansive lawns, and intricate detailing. The interiors were just as impressive, featuring high ceilings, ornate chandeliers, and lavish furnishings that mirrored her glamorous lifestyle. The home became a hub for Hollywood's elite. Frequent visitors included some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry, 
Legendary figures like Frank Sinatra, Elizabeth Taylor, and Halston were often seen at her lavish parties. These gatherings were the epitome of Hollywood extravagance, filled with music, laughter, and the finest champagne. One of the most memorable features of the mansion was its entertainment spaces. The grand living room, with its plush seating and state-of-the-art sound system, was perfect for impromptu performances and sing-alongs. There was also a stunning outdoor area, complete with a swimming pool and lush gardens, where guests could relax and enjoy the California sunshine. Liza's personal touch was evident throughout the mansion. Each room reflected her unique sense of style and love for the dramatic. The walls were adorned with artwork and memorabilia from her illustrious career, including posters from Cabaret and New York, New York, and photographs of her with other Hollywood legends. The master suite was a sanctuary within a sanctuary. It featured a luxurious king-sized bed, a walk-in closet filled with designer outfits, and a balcony that offered breathtaking views of the city. This space was her retreat, a place where she could unwind and recharge after the demands of her hectic schedule. The mansion wasn't just a place for parties, it was also a creative haven. Liza often used the space to rehearse for upcoming performances and to entertain close friends and family in more intimate settings. Music and laughter filled the halls, making it a home full of life and joy. Despite the glamour, the mansion also witnessed some of her personal struggles. It was a place where she faced battles with addiction and health issues. Yet, through it all, the home remained a symbol of her resilience and determination to keep moving forward. By the late 1970s, the mansion on North Roxbury Drive had become an iconic part of her legacy. The mansion stood as a shining example of Hollywood opulence, a place where dreams were made and where the star herself could find solace and inspiration. Personal struggles begin. As Liza Minnelli's career soared, her personal life began to face significant challenges. The 1980s marked a period of intense struggles, both professionally and personally. Despite her public persona of glamour and success behind closed doors, she faced battles that would profoundly impact her life. Liza's struggles with addiction became increasingly severe during this time. The pressures of maintaining her career, coupled with the legacy of her famous mother's own struggles with substance abuse, created a challenging environment. She was open about her battles, telling the New York Times in a 1994 interview, I'm my mother's daughter, I'm her disciple, I'm proud of it, proud of her. The first significant public acknowledgement of her struggles came in 1984 when she entered the Betty Ford Center for Treatment. This was a pivotal moment as it marked her first attempt to confront and manage her addiction. The Betty Ford Center, known for its comprehensive treatment programs, provided a refuge where she could begin her journey toward recovery. Her health issues extended beyond addiction. In 1984, she was diagnosed with viral encephalitis, a severe condition that threatened her life. Doctors initially feared she would never walk or talk again. In a later interview, she recounted, I was told I wouldn't walk or talk or anything, and I told the doctors, no, let me try. Her recovery was nothing short of miraculous, demonstrating her incredible willpower and determination. Amid these personal battles, her career faced its own set of challenges. The 1980s saw fewer high-profile roles, and the demanding nature of her personal life made it difficult to maintain the same level of professional activity. However, she continued to perform and make appearances, showing resilience in the face of adversity. Her personal relationships also faced turmoil. After her divorce from Jack Haley Jr. in 1979, she married Mark Giro, a sculptor and stage manager, in 1979. Their relationship was intensely scrutinized by the media, and they eventually divorced in 1992. Despite these struggles, she remained a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Her talent and charisma continued to captivate audiences. In 1985, she returned to Broadway with The Rink, a musical co-starring Chaita Rivera. The show ran for 204 performances, and her role earned her a Drama Desk Award nomination. Her mansion on North Roxbury Drive remained a constant in her life, even as other aspects seemed tumultuous. It was a place where she could retreat, reflect, and gather strength. The mansion saw moments of joy and sorrow, standing as a silent witness to her incredible journey. As the 1990s approached, Liza Minnelli faced more than most could imagine. Her personal struggles were significant, but her determination to overcome them was even more remarkable. 
financial troubles. As the 1990s progressed, Liza Minnelli's financial situation began to mirror the turmoil of her personal life. Despite her success and the wealth it brought, managing finances became increasingly challenging. The costs associated with her lifestyle, health issues, and professional setbacks started to accumulate, leading to significant financial strain. The mansion on North Roxbury Drive, once a symbol of her success, became a substantial financial burden. The maintenance of such a grand estate was expensive, and as her income fluctuated, keeping up with the costs became difficult. Regular upkeep, repairs, and property taxes added up, creating a growing financial challenge. In addition to the mansion's maintenance costs, Liza faced mounting medical expenses. Her ongoing health issues required frequent medical attention, treatments, and hospital stays. These costs, combined with her efforts to maintain her career and personal life, placed a significant strain on her finances. By the early 1990s, it became clear that managing the mansion was no longer sustainable. The property, which had once been the site of glamorous parties and gatherings, started showing signs of neglect. The gardens, once meticulously maintained, grew wild and unkempt. The interior, which had been a showcase of opulence, began to deteriorate as essential repairs were delayed due to financial constraints. In 1992, her financial troubles became more public. Reports of unpaid bills and lawsuits for non-payment surfaced, highlighting the depth of her financial struggles. Creditors and former employees filed claims, and the media began to cover her financial woes extensively. This public scrutiny added to the pressure she was already facing. In an attempt to alleviate some of the financial burden, she started to sell off valuable possessions. Artworks, jewelry, and other personal items were auctioned to raise funds. These sales provided temporary relief, but were not enough to resolve her financial difficulties entirely. The strain of her financial troubles was compounded by personal issues. Her marriage to Mark Jarrow ended in 1992, adding emotional stress to her already difficult situation. The divorce proceedings and settlement further impacted her financial stability. Despite these challenges, Liza Minnelli continued to work. She took on various roles in television and film, including guest appearances and supporting roles. Her performances, though fewer than in her peak years, continued to showcase her incredible talent and resilience. The pressure of her financial situation affected her health and well-being. Stress and anxiety about her finances, combined with her ongoing battles with addiction and health issues, made this a particularly challenging period. She entered rehab again in the late 1990s, seeking help for her substance abuse issues. By the end of the decade, it was evident that drastic measures were needed to address her financial problems. The decision to sell the mansion became inevitable. The property, once a beacon of her success, had become an albatross, symbolizing the difficulties she faced. In 2002, the mansion was put on the market. Selling the estate was a heartbreaking decision, but it was necessary to stabilize her finances. The sale marked the end of an era, closing a chapter that had been filled with both incredible highs and significant lows. The decline of the mansion. With the sale of the mansion in 2002, the property that had once epitomized Hollywood glamour and Liza Minnelli's success entered a period of decline. The new owners faced the daunting task of restoring a property that had seen years of neglect. Despite their efforts, the mansion's condition continued to deteriorate, becoming a shadow of its former self. The first signs of decline were evident in the overgrown gardens and disrepair of the once grand facade. The meticulously manicured lawns and colorful flower beds, which had been a hallmark of the estate, were replaced by weeds and overgrowth. The fountain, a centerpiece of the front yard, fell into disrepair, its once sparkling waters now stagnant and murky. Inside the mansion, the situation was equally dire. The opulent interiors that had hosted countless glamorous parties and gatherings were now showing significant wear and tear. Cracks appeared in the walls, paint peeled from the ceilings, and the elegant fixtures that had once dazzled guests were tarnished and broken. The ballroom, which had echoed with the sounds of music and laughter, was now silent and dusty. The grand piano, a focal point of many impromptu performances by Liza and her guests, stood untouched and out of tune. The crystal chandeliers that had illuminated the room were dim and covered in cobwebs. Despite the neglect, traces of its former glory remained. Portraits of Liza and her family, remnants of the lavish furnishings, 
and the iconic architectural details all served as reminders of the mansion's illustrious past. These remnants, however, only accentuated the stark contrast between the estate's current state and its former splendor. Efforts to restore the mansion were met with numerous challenges. The cost of necessary repairs was substantial, and finding buyers or investors willing to undertake such a project proved difficult. The mansion's size and historical significance made any restoration project both costly and complex. In the mid-2000s, there were several attempts to sell the mansion. However, the high asking price coupled with the extensive repairs needed deterred potential buyers. The property changed hands multiple times, each new owner facing the same difficulties in restoring it to its former glory. By the late 2000s, the mansion had become an emblem of Hollywood's fleeting nature. What had once been a vibrant, lively home filled with the sounds of celebration was now a quiet, decaying structure. The decline of the mansion mirrored the transient nature of fame and fortune, serving as a poignant reminder of the highs and lows experienced by those in the entertainment industry. Attempts at revival. In the early 2010, interest in restoring the mansion surged. Preservationists, historians, and fans of Liza Minnelli rallied to save the property. The first major attempt came in 2011, when a well-known real estate developer expressed interest in purchasing and restoring the mansion. The developer had a track record of successfully reviving historic properties, and the plan included a comprehensive renovation that would preserve the original architectural features while updating the estate to modern standards. However, the estimated cost of the project, which ran into millions of dollars, became a significant hurdle. Securing the necessary funding proved difficult, and the deal eventually fell through. In 2013, another effort was initiated by a group of private investors who shared a passion for Hollywood history. This group, which included celebrities and philanthropists, aimed to restore the mansion as a cultural landmark and potentially open it to the public as a museum or event space. They believed that the mansion's storied past and connection to Liza Minnelli could attract visitors and generate revenue to sustain the property. Despite their enthusiasm and initial fundraising success, logistical challenges and disagreements among the group members led to the project being abandoned. Throughout these attempts, the mansion continued to deteriorate. The once lush gardens were now overgrown with weeds and the exterior of the house showed significant wear and tear. Vandals and trespassers had taken a toll on the property, further complicating restoration efforts. Security measures were implemented, but the damage had already been done. In 2015, a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving historic Hollywood properties stepped in. They launched a public campaign to raise awareness and funds for the mansion's restoration. The campaign garnered significant attention, and donations poured in from fans around the world. The organization managed to raise a substantial amount, but it was still not enough to cover the extensive restoration costs. One of the more creative attempts at revival came in 2017, when a film production company proposed using the mansion as a set for a high-budget historical drama series. The idea was to integrate the restoration into the production budget, using the mansion's revival as part of the storyline. This proposal generated considerable buzz and seemed like a promising solution. However, due to changes in the production schedule and financing issues, the project was shelved. In 2019, a new hope emerged when a tech entrepreneur with a passion for historic properties purchased the mansion. The new owner announced plans for a meticulous restoration, combining modern technology with traditional craftsmanship to bring the mansion back to life. Early reports indicated that significant progress was being made, with an emphasis on retaining the original charm and character of the estate. The Mansion Today in 2024, the mansion is largely uninhabited, its grand halls and opulent rooms now empty and silent. The exterior shows significant wear, with ivy and overgrown vegetation creeping up the walls. Windows are boarded up, and the grand entrance that once welcomed Hollywood's elite is now weathered and uninviting. Inside, the decay is even more apparent. The once lavish decor has succumbed to the ravages of time. Ceilings have collapsed in places, revealing the skeletal structure of the mansion. Floors are strewn with debris, and the elegant fixtures and furnishings are either gone or in a state of severe disrepair. The ballroom, where Liza Minnelli and her guests once danced and sang, is now a hauntingly empty space, its splendor reduced to echoes of the past. 
Despite its dilapidated state, the mansion still attracts attention. Urban explorers, history enthusiasts, and fans of Liza Minnelli continue to visit, documenting their experiences and sharing them on social media. These visits, while unauthorized, have kept the memory of the mansion alive in the public consciousness. Photographs and videos of the decaying interiors circulate widely, sparking discussions about its history and the life of its famous owner. The mansion's current state has also inspired artistic projects. Photographers, filmmakers, and artists have used the property as a backdrop for works that explore themes of decay, memory, and the passage of time. These projects have brought a new kind of life to the mansion, even in its abandonment, turning it into a source of creative inspiration. While the future of the mansion remains uncertain, its story continues to captivate. It stands as a silent witness to the highs and lows of Hollywood, a physical reminder of the impermanence of fame and fortune.